For a mathematical function like this one, it is sometimes useful to know the slope of the curve. Differentiation is a method for finding the slope of a curve at any point. In this video, we will look at the slope of a straight line, and then see how this concept can be applied to a curve. We will also look at some of the techniques that can be used to differentiate many well-known mathematical functions and combinations of functions. Differentiation is a large and important topic. This video is just a quick overview of what will be covered in later videos. We will start by looking at straight lines. We can find the slope of a straight line by looking at any two points on the line A and B. The point C is directly opposite point A and directly below point B, so ABC is a right angled triangle. The length AC is equal to the change in X between points A and B. We call this delta X. The triangle character is the Greek letter delta. The length CD is equal to the change in Y between points A and B. We call this delta Y. The slope is defined as delta Y over delta X. In this case, AC is 6 units and CB is 4 units, so the slope is 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. The slope of a straight line is sometimes called its gradient. This means the same as slope. The slope represents the rate of change of y with respect to x. This tells us how much y changes when x increases by 1. In this example, the slope is positive 2 thirds, so y increases by 2 thirds when x increases by 1. Here are some examples showing the slope of various straight lines. This line has a slope of 0.5. The slope is positive. This means y increases as x increases, so the line slopes upwards from left to right. This line has a slope of 2. It still slopes upwards, and the line is steeper because the value of the slope is higher. This line has a slope of minus 1.5. Since the slope is negative, y decreases as x increases, so the line slopes downwards from left to right. This line has a slope of minus 0.25. It still slopes downwards, but the line isn't as steep because the magnitude of the slope is smaller. This line has a slope of zero. The y value doesn't change at all as x changes, so the line is horizontal. A vertical line has infinite slope. This means the x value is always the same for any value of y. Here is a quadratic curve. Its formula is x squared minus 2x plus 2. How do we find the slope of the curve? Well, the first thing to notice is that the slope of the curve is different at different points on the curve. Let's start by choosing a particular point on the curve. We will choose the point where x equals 2. We find the slope by drawing a tangent to the curve at that point. A tangent is a line that just touches the curve without crossing it. Here's the tangent to the curve at x equals 2. If the line had a slightly shallower slope, the line would cross the curve rather than just touching the curve. If the line had a slightly steeper slope, again the line would cross the curve rather than just touching it. The tangent is the only line that touches the curve without crossing it. The slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the curve at that exact point. If we draw the tangent at other points on the curve, we can see that the slope of the curve is different at different places along the curve. We don't need to draw a tangent and try to measure its slope. For many curves, we can calculate the slope at any point. Since the slope is different for different values of x, the slope can be expressed as a function of x. For example, this curve has the formula x squared minus 2x plus 2. The slope as a function of x is 2x minus 2. We will learn how to derive this formula in a later video. 
We use the notation y prime to indicate the slope of y. The process of calculating the slope as a function of x is called differentiation. The resulting function y prime is called the first derivative of y. When x is 1, 2x minus 2 is 0. This means that the slope is 0 when x is 1. This is the bottom of the u shape. When x is greater than 1, 2x minus 2 is positive and gets larger as x increases. This means that the curve slopes upwards and gets steeper as x increases. When x is less than 1, 2x minus 2 is negative and gets larger as x decreases. This means that the curve slopes downwards and gets steeper as x decreases. This matches the shape of the graph. Differentiation has many practical uses. Here are some examples. In mechanics and physics, it can be used to model rates of change of a variable in a system. For example, acceleration is the first derivative of velocity. It can be used to find local maximum and minimum values of a function, because the first derivative of a function is zero when the curve reverses direction. This happens when x is 1 in the quadratic curve we saw earlier. It is often used to analyse and model mathematical functions. For example, we use differentiation to derive the Maclaurin and Taylor series of a function. The inverse process, integration, can be used to calculate areas and lengths. We know how to differentiate many different functions, including powers, polynomials, exponentials, logarithms, trig functions and hyperbolic functions. In many cases, the derivatives of these functions have been proved from first principles. We will see how to do that for several functions in later videos. There are also several powerful rules we can often apply to find other derivatives. If we know the derivative of f of x, we can find the derivative of the inverse of f of x, for example, the inverse of the exponential function. If we know the derivatives of f and x and g of x, we can find the derivatives of the product and quotient of the two functions. These are called the product rule and the quotient rule. For example, we know the derivatives of sine and cos, so we can calculate the derivative of tan using the quotient rule. If we know the derivatives of f of x and g of x, we can find the derivative of f of g of x. This is called the chain rule. For example, we know the derivative of sine and x squared, so we can calculate the derivative of sine of x squared using the chain rule. We will cover these rules in later videos. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or visit graphicmaths.com. The link is in the description below.